guys welcome back to yet another safest video i wish i could come to each of you and give you a good pat on the back for being so regular for showing up and practicing with me i am so so grateful you motivate me i am sure a lot of you are motivating others to show up to practice with me the question that we are going to do today is really going to help you because it's very commonly asked it's like one of those typical questions that's asked a lot during interviews i have also been asked this so without wasting any time let's get started so this is the question that we are doing today vertical sum now we'll go like kirti tree is a hierarchical structure where is vertical coming to it so we have to draw imaginary vertical lines so for that to understand let me explain a bit so here say there is one one is the root right now here we go one left so say the distance of 2 from 1 is uh, 1 right suppose when we are going towards left our distance is a negative so let me just write it over here what i am saying when we go towards our left i am just saying our distance will become negative just so that we understand that when we are going to right our distance is becoming positive okay so basically what i am saying is our root node has the distance of 0 then our two node the second node has the distance of minus 1 okay so let me just write it like this so one has the distance of 0 two has the distance of minus 1 now when you come again to 5 right so what will be the distance of 5 so when you come to 5 basically see the distance of 2 was minus 1 now from minus 1 again you are going to write so you have to increase your distance by 1 so your distance become minus 1 plus 1 which is 0 so if you see the distance of 1 and the distance of 5 is same so basically it is in the same vertical line let me quickly show you the diagram also so see i have drawn the diagram to make it easy for you when we see in uh, laptop and all it doesn't seem so clear that's why i have like drawn the diagram to make it clear see all of this is in the same vertical line 1 6 and 5 is in the same vertical line because we have one going to the left and then we are going to right similarly over here once we are going to left then we are going to right now suppose there was something on the right suppose there was 8 over here then 3 and 8 would have been on the same line and after this suppose there was another one over here 9 then this would also have been in this line so basically we have to draw imaginary vertical lines like this okay now suppose there was something on the right suppose it was 10 this would have been on this this line suppose there was something on the left it would have been on this line suppose there was something on the left of over here so say like this it would have been on this line right suppose there was something over here it would have been a new line so this is each line and in the question it has given to us we have to find the vertical sum so basically sum of all the nodes are in each line we have to see so what i did was i introduce a concept of distance for you so that you can understand it okay what is the line so here the distance of all of these nodes is zero and when you go to left the distance of all of these become minus 1 distance of this become minus 2 the distance of this becomes 1 distance of this becomes 2 distance of this becomes 3 then suppose there was over here and then it would have been minus 3 and how do we get this so if the distance of this is 0 when we go to left we just add minus 1 then when we go to right we add 1 to it so minus 1 plus 1 becomes again 0 so in the vertical line 0 then suppose we go to the right we just add 1 to it when we go to left we just subtract minus 1 to it so if you do like this so see if i add 1 i end up in here if i add 1 i end up here if i add 1 i end up here if i subtract minus 1 i go towards left and my my distance is 2 if i again go to left subtract minus 1 my distance is 1 so in terms of distance it becomes very easy so basically whenever you are going to left just add minus 1 to the distance whenever you are going to right just add 1 to the distance and this visualization is really really going to help you in the long run i know it becomes confusing when you see it on laptop because they when you see like this that okay there is a 5 coming over here there is a 6 coming from over here they can't draw it on the same vertical line so they draw it adjacent to each other but in reality if you think about it it is not adjacent it is actually the same vertical line and this visualization is very very important for you to understand in trees questions now let's get to the code part so let's get to the code part here this is the binary tree that is given to us let's quickly write the distances to quickly understand that okay how is the vertical sum calculated here the uh, we have to return the vector of integers so basically we have to return 
uh, all the vertical sums that are there okay so what will all the vertical sums will be so on the leftmost there is just four okay after that there is what there is two after that there is one five six so let me quickly write also the distances so for four the distance is what it is minus two so it was zero minus one minus two so for minus two the sum is going to be four because there is only one right then for the distance of minus one which all uh, nodes are there it is just two right so the sum is going to be two for the distance zero which all nodes are there there is one then there is five and then there is six so this is what we have to return because see uh, for six also it is one minus one it will be zero right then for distance of one what is the vertical sum that we have on the right what is there it is three right for the distance of two it is what it is seven because plus one plus one so it is seven so this is what we have to return we have to return like this okay now if you see when we are returning also we have to return from the leftmost see first we are returning four then two then one five six then three then seven so what i'm going to do is i'm going to store the distances in the ascending order right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to store a map what i'm what map am i going to write i am going to write map of integer to integer so basically this integer is the distance so it is like distance comma sum right now note few details over here see firstly i'm storing the distance over here why am i using map and not unordered map suppose in the question it was given to us that we can return the uh, sums in any order like we can return the uh, distances zero first then the two ones then the one ones then i could have just stored it in unordered map but because I need the keys also to be sorted, I am storing them in the map. That is the difference between unordered and uh, unordered map and map. If you have doubt about this, I have uh, videos on STL on my main channel, on the Kirti Pursani channel. C++ STL, there is an entire playlist where you can understand that, okay, what is the difference between unordered map and map, okay? Then here I am storing the sum, the value. So this is the key and this is the value. So the what value am I storing? I am storing the sum. Because in this question, I have to return sum. Suppose in the question it was given that return all the elements in the same vertical line, don't return the same. Don't, don't return the sum, return all the elements. So instead of integer, instead of storing just sum, I would have stored what? I would have stored vector of integers. I would have stored all the elements. Some people can actually do like this that, you know, touch your nose like this. They will first store all the, word, all the vector of integers and later they will calculate the sum and return. So instead of that, we are going to be smart. We are going to uh, store only the sum and not the, the entire vector. Okay. So now let's start writing the code. Let's start writing the recursive function. So I'm not going to return anything. I'm calling it helper and I am passing the root value to it. And this root value, whatever distance it has, I'm passing that. Okay. Now what am I going to do in this map? What was my uh, key value? It was distance. This is the distance that I have passed. I will first add the value that I have okay now few things to note over here that I am adding the value okay I'm not just storing the value I'm adding the value in C++ by default all the values are zero so I can go like this I don't have to add it okay if you're using some other language do it accordingly write your syntaxes that if the key is not present then you add the key you start from the zero and then you add this in C++ by default, if this distance is not present in the map, it is going to assume that, okay, MPF distance was zero and it is going to add the value to it. Okay. This is the first thing. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check that don't worry if it is not clear, it will be very, very clear. If there is left value, then what am I going to do? I'm going to call the same function for root car left and I'm going to pass what distance? Distance minus one. When I go to left, what happens? My distance reduces by one, right? So distance minus one. Similarly, I will check if there is something on right. I'm going to call the same function. I'm going to pass the right one and I'm going to add my distance by what? By one. See, when I go to right, I am adding my distance by one. When I'm going to left, I am reducing the distance by one. Again, I am sure all of you already know that I'm going to save this. That instead of adding the checks over here, if root ka left, if root ka right, I could have added the check over here. That if root does not exist, then just return from there. Okay, that is one thing. Another thing, if you notice, I have created the map as a private member of this class. Instead of that, what I could have done is, 
I could have uh, created the map in this function and then passed it. So what I would have to do, I would have to pass it by reference because I'm making changes in this and then I would have to pass it again and again. So instead of doing that, I have just created a private member so that it is easy for me to write the code. That's it. So here, what am I going to do? I'm going to call the helper function and I'm going to pass the root to it. And my root initially is going to be one. So what is the distance of one? It is zero. So I'm passing zero. And now what I have to do is I have to return vector of integers instead of the map. So map was to store that, okay, corresponding to this, uh, this distances, this is the sum. Now I have to convert this map to vector somehow. So what am I going to do? I'm going to iterate over this map. So suppose particular uh, element that I'm dealing with is X. I am iterating through this. I need a new vector also. So I'm going to make a new vector, vector of integer res. And what am I going to do in this res? I am going to keep pushing the values. So see, in this map, when you traverse the map like this, so you can actually access the keys by x dot first and the values by x dot second. So these are all STL things that, you know, you can watch my STL videos on my main channel, or you can just Google that how do we iterate over the map, okay? So this is one way to iterate over the map. Uh, otherwise, one way is that I write the entire thing that, okay, this is the iterator. This is just so much easier to write. Uh, so I hope all of you are used to writing such code. If not, get used to it. You practice like this with me. You will do great. Awesome. These are the little things that you will learn while practicing with me, right? So here in this for loop, what am I doing? I am traversing through the entire map. For each x, there is one first value and there is one second value. First value is basically the key and the second value is what? It is the sum. So that is what we want. So I have pushed all the second values to my res. Now I'm going to return res from here. Let's compile and see whether this works or not. Worked. Let's submit it and see. Awesome. If you have any doubts, let me know I'm here to clear all your doubts. And also I'm thinking of starting strings playlist parallelly so that we can continue trace recursion, but we can also do a bit of strings because this is unlimited. We just need to continue practicing, but I think we can parallelly start strings also because so many people were requesting for it. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Should we start it parallelly or not? So see you tomorrow. Ta -da.